Our family's catching a flight from our part-time home in the Philippines to the opposite side of Asia, touching down in the city in Emirate of Dubai. Even though this is our first time in the UAE, we're bypassing the obvious tourist traps in search of some Arabian adventure that's more off the beaten path. So we're about to explore Dubai by sea, by air, and by land. And for the first time in a long time, we're traveling with a carry-on suitcase, but only for a very special reason. We need to get our grab, but more importantly, we need to figure out what terminal we're going to. It is the worst part about the Manila Airport is that the terminals are so stinking far apart, and I feel like they never make it clear what terminal your flight's on. Let's see if I can do a little digging and find out. Terminal three. So in case you don't know, Grab is like an Uber or Lyft, very popular here in the Philippines. So we're gonna go to terminal three. Okay, driver's almost here already. Grabs here are so much faster than Ubers or Lyft that we've experienced in the U.S. Ah, here he is. Flying on Cebu Airlines, and I am very impressed with the prices that we got. Round trip from Manila to Dubai, non stop, for $350 per person. This would have been our first real chance to fly on Emirates Airlines, which we've never done before. Uh, but when you have a family of four, you have to be a little bit more cost conscious than you would otherwise. So that's why we're on Cebu Pacific today. Okay, buddy. Bye -bye. All set. We're just going through security and getting on the plane. Okay, thank you. Now that we're through security, let's back things up so that I can show you the only piece of luggage I've genuinely been excited to carry. <laughs> this is the Sterling Pacific 35 liter cabin travel case. Now we don't often do carry on bags when we travel, but when you have one this rugged, this intelligent, and this stunningly beautiful, you don't want it to leave your side. Its $2,000 price tag is sure to exceed some budgets, but let me make two points. First, it's absolutely priced fairly, considering the incredible features and quality that I'm about to show you. And it's priced competitively with other high-end luggage brands. A lot of people go through life buying a dozen cheap suitcases, replacing them as they break, all the while spending even more than just one of these. Sterling Pacific is designed for discerning travelers who prefer to invest in luggage that's designed and built to last a lifetime and to look stunning along the way. And second, even if you really don't think you're up for the cost, you're gonna enjoy seeing these features anyway. Just like it's fun to watch videos about $30,000 hotel suites or $25,000 first class airplane pods, even if they're not within our current budget, they're still very aspirational and super fun to see up close. Sterling Pacific cases, which currently include this size and the larger 80 liter check-in version, are like the classic Ferrari of luggage brands. And if you're one of the many discerning pilots or other frequent flyers with the sense to acquire one, you'll never go back. Of course, we have a link in the description to buy whenever you're ready. When Sterling Pacific first reached out to us, I immediately looked up some product reviews. And not only did I have a really difficult time finding anything even remotely negative, but the first comments I found were things like, a functional piece of art, best constructed piece of luggage I have ever owned, and unbelievable design and detail. Someone even said that these bags are like the Rolls Royce of luggage, but I'm sticking with my classic Ferrari. Let me show you why I'm already obsessed with this bag. The first thing you notice is the aluminum body, but this isn't your ordinary aluminum. The body is 50-52 alloy and the reinforcement areas like these heavy duty corners, the wheel housings, and the trolley housings are A380. As a former pilot and Air Force crew chief, I can tell you that these alloys are widely used in the aviation industry because of the high strength to weight ratio, corrosion resistance, and formability. This allows them to create a great case that's super durable, especially compared to the plastics we have in every other suitcase in our collection. These hydraulic press ridges here aren't arbitrary. They're great for impact protection during serious use. Everything is perfectly secured with over 100 SAE 304 stainless steel rivets. I don't have any personal experience with that particular metal, but I'm told they have a shear strength of 26,000 pounds per square inch. The second thing you'll notice on the exterior are these handles that sport a full grain Italian leather just like in a Ferrari. And I love this particular finish and how it ages beautifully through regular use. It takes me back to a tour we did in a little leather shop in Tuscany. Although this one actually comes from Chiampo in the Veneto region of Italy. 
Okay, I have to keep moving because I haven't even shown you the interior yet, and it might be even more mind-blowing than the exterior. No silly zippers here. This baby is secured shut with double spring-loaded TSA combination latch locks. You might as well be transporting 30 billion bucks in cash. Be sure to declare it though, otherwise that's illegal. Trolley handles are typically made from plastic, but this one is die-cast aluminum connected to extruded aluminum tubing that retracts into a die-cast aluminum housing. And the handle is that beautiful full grain leather. Now, some people prefer spinner luggage, and Sterling Pacific might have something interesting in store for you. But I really like the low-profile, ultra-durable design of dual through-axle wheels on this case. They're two and a half inches in diameter and recessed into those aluminum housings, so they reduce wear and tear through rugged use. And they roll so smoothly over uneven and rough surfaces. But let's open this puppy up and see how they pair the intelligent form and function of the exterior with an equally well-thought-out interior. The first thing that I notice is that instead of the usual dual compartments that make it difficult to open and close without dumping your carefully placed contents all over the place, and airport security is notorious for doing this, this case has a deep side storage and a shallow lid side. It's every bit as voluminous, but because the hinges hold the lid upright, you only need half the countertop or luggage rack space of most luggage. Absolutely brilliant. Now the lid side has this integrated mesh compartment that's perfect for smaller items, but everything else is covered in this gorgeous ring spun twill weave lining. Whatever you put in here can be secured with the interlocking buckle straps, which, no surprise, use high quality metal buckles instead of the typical plastic. It even comes with an amenity and care kit that includes the bag, some leather wax and cloth, the instruction manual, and a sterling Pacific pen that's made of, you guessed it, aluminum. And if you're thinking, leather wax, I have to do maintenance on my luggage? Let me start by saying you absolutely do not have to, especially if you prefer the natural patina that the leather will develop over time. But I personally like the idea of hand waxing it from time to time and pretending like I'm pampering my sports car in the driveway before I take it out for a leisurely Sunday spin. Because a case that's this well designed isn't merely a piece of luggage, it's a country club membership. Now at 11 and a half pounds, it's about three pounds heavier than our lightest carry-on suitcase. But it's hard to pretend like that really bothers me because 99% of the time, I'm gonna be rolling it, not lifting it. Every Sterling Pacific bag comes with a lifetime warranty and repair service that covers defects and the main functionality of the case for the lifetime of the original owner. You can learn more and shop online at followabc.com SP or just use the link in the description. They ship worldwide and even though we were in the Philippines, they dispatched one and had it at our doorstep within a day. Now let's take this awesome bag to Dubai. Many, many, many hours later, we are in Dubai. It's our 24th country, and it is not our first trip to Asia. We fell in love with Asia and have been back many times, but we've never been to a destination like this. It's our first time in the Middle East, and we cannot wait to explore it. We've gotta get through customs and get our rental car and get to the hotel, and we're going straight to bed. So we're gonna put the camera away and see you in the morning. I never thought I would say this, but thank God for jet lag. It's serving its purpose for us today because we made a four hour time shift backwards. We're up at 4 a.m. this morning, but it feels like 8 a.m., thank goodness. We're waiting for our driver this morning because we're gonna go and do something that none of us have ever done before. We're lucky that we get to see the Burj Khalifa in this light because it is so beautiful lit up. It's right there, and if you're not familiar with the Burj Khalifa, it is the tallest building in the world. Yes, but not for long because they're already under construction on a newer building that's gonna be probably nearly half a kilometer taller. It might be up to a kilometer and a half tall, which is pretty mind-blowing. Okay. Good morning. We're gonna share our ride with two other people, and it's a 40-minute drive, so we'll see you when we get there.
Yes, come in, boss. Please, please. Please, come, don't hesitate. Come on. This is too big for you. Yes, come, come on. This isn't me! Keep your weights all, that's it! That was intense, having to run and get in the basket really quickly, but it was because we had to get in and have that weight distribution to level out the basket. And then we quickly just got up in the air and we're gonna be up here cruising around for about 45 minutes. And the pilot can't control where we go. And so we're just going to... We're gonna cruise around up here for roughly 40, 45 minutes, uh, depending on where he thinks a good, safe place for us to land is. Because, I mean, we can end up anywhere, wherever the wind blows us. Do you like it up here, bud? Yes. It's fun. Quiet until the fire goes. <laughs> You probably noticed the haze. That's totally normal for this time of year. As it gets hotter, this haze comes in because of the humidity in the air. So it's harder to see in the summertime. And he says that sometimes in the winter, there might be a few days that you can see all the way to the city. We all the way to the city, which is really far away. Right now, we are 3,700 feet in altitude. Ooh. There are a lot of other balloons flying around up here, but we're the highest. And the sun, oh, we turned around. How funny, the sun is over there now. It used to be right behind me. So pretty coming up. There's a landing spot that he picked out right over here, a little gray area. We're headed straight towards it, so if the wind is on our side, we're looking pretty good. It'll be a hard landing. We're getting close to landing, which can be pretty rough. We have to get in a very specific position and hold on really tight, because we could bounce and skid, and so Phil has to have two hands. We're gonna have to put the camera away for landing. We'll see you on the ground. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> that was bumpy. Nice smile. Hold on, baby. Now, Mommy, come on. I didn't. Thanks, I'm called you. You guys want a bigger basketball? Landing was the coolest part. Said the landing, especially for people in our row, so mom, me, and him. Because they were, were in the bottom so like, the ground one. It was as if we were the basket and we just slammed into the ground. I had Colt in front of me like I was holding him like this and so when we hit it slammed me back and onto my butt, but I'm good. I will survive, I'll recover from this. That was fun. Well I think the big question is are we gonna hot air balloon again or is it one and done? Again and... You want to do it again? Not done. You know what I could see doing it in Morocco maybe? Oh, or um... Marrakesh. Cappadocia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a certificate! I graduated. Nice. Thank you very much. I graduated. Not I have another one. Awesome! This is a survival certificate. You have to be there in person to claim it. This is your first flight certificate, one of many, right? We've got a 45 minute drive back into the city for our next activity and we've got some hungry kids to feed. Finally, we've reached the point of the episode where we're going to explore the city of Dubai by sea. Our entire stay in Dubai and this boat trip in particular has been planned by our new friend Vicky. She's been a follower of our channel for a while 
born in the Philippines but has lived in Dubai for 13 years. So she is an expert of all experts. Vicky's gonna take us out on this really cool yellow boat so that we can enjoy the city skyline from a very unique perspective. And we're gonna be able to explore some of the buildings that we'd otherwise have to take cars, helicopters, or some other mode of transportation to, but we get to see them all in once. So all aboard, let's head out. She's right here! Vicky! Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for welcome, helping us plan all welcome. of it. Welcome, You are welcome anytime. Thank you. If Thank you come you. back again next time, I'm just here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hi! So, when, if people want to book the same trip that we're doing on the boat, yes. how do they contact you? They can contact me. I'll give you my phone number, mm -hmm. my email address, mm -hmm. and my social media account. We'll put that in the description. So, <laughs> contact me anytime. Anything you want to do in Dubai, you want to do any tours, uh, you can contact me. I can arrange it for you. VIP. VIP, <laughs> that's what I feel like we've been getting with her. And I am so, so, so excited about all the other activities we're doing too. I'm most excited to see the Seven Star Hotel. Come through. We're starting here at Marina The Walk and we are going to see places like Atlantis, the Seven Star Hotel, the Palm, things that we're really excited to see. And with this being our very first day, we're getting a lay of the land. Sorry. We're expecting it to be, oh, Sorry. life vest, thank you. Yeah. For your safety, left arm uh -huh. over your head. Okay. And a strap on your body. Perfect. And a strap on your body. Yeah. We're expecting some of this to be pretty fast and pretty windy. So let's get the hair out of the way. Guy. And our captain is Maximo at the back. And this is a group tour. It's going to be 99 minutes. And we have our guy, Gio, and our captain is Maximo. They're going to take good care of us. We're going to be going slow as we get out of the marina, but you can really see how big the walk is around the marina. And there's tons of shops, restaurants, and I feel like if we were to live in Dubai, this seems like our vibe here. It's like the most cliche tourism thing ever to talk about living in every place that you visit, but it's also unavoidable because places like this especially, it's, it's already beautiful and they've got pretty much everything you could ever want, so it's hard to not think about buying a place here. Plus, we know some people who live here and they, they love it, absolutely love it. 20 years ago, this whole area was nothing and everything's really been built up uh, in about five years. Also, there's a wire, a couple of wires up there goes from that tall, tall building over there all the way down ending where we started at the marina and that's a zip line and our guide says it's pretty expensive but wouldn't have that been so cool if we'd known about that we probably would have taken that as our mode of transportation to get here. We're about to go fast and I'm probably about to throw up because I get motion sickness every single time I go on a boat and I throw up every single time I go on a boat. Every single time. Yeah but worth it every time. This is Blue Water Island. It's a man-made island, and we're about to go really fast. And our next stop, Atlantis. Look, I've seen that on YouTube. It's like a giant water park. It's got a huge slide on top. It's the largest in the world. Atlantis is a hotel brand, and this is the largest in the world, and I think I heard him say that it cost over $500 million to build. It was built by a South African who also built the brand One and Only, which is a gorgeous hotel chain. Its theme is after the lost city of Atlantis. And now we're off to Burj Al Arab. It's remarkably quiet. Got two outboard Suzuki engines back there, and I think just because the uh, captain's helm is in between us, it blocks a lot of the noise. So it's really pleasant on here, especially with the breeze. It keeps you cool, quiet. This is Burj Al Arab, one of the coolest hotels in the entire world. A funny story, about 15 years ago, they emailed my agency about doing a website for them. We replied, never heard back after that. So I don't know what happened, but really cool because at least 200 all sweet rooms inside, so much gold plating. Speaking of gold, they have gold martini glasses that are used to serve the most expensive cocktail in the world, about 8,000 US dollars. If you look at the very top, you'll see the long strip of glass. That's the restaurant and probably the bar where you get the cocktail, right? And it's got a man-made land bridge that goes out, which is how you would drive probably in your Rolls Royce or your Maybach or whatever. 
from the mainland to get out to the hotel. It's probably the main way to get to the hotel unless you take a helicopter and on the side you can see sticking out, that's the helicopter landing pad. It looks like a little spaceship. Skydiving is really huge here and the two planes that were right behind me there are called Twin Otters and it's the best skydiving plane on the planet, hands down. It's what they use at the Air Force Academy. Everybody uses them if you want to do serious skydiving. I don't think we've seen any fewer than about 100 skydivers just since we started this little boat trip. It is interesting to me that you start right here in the marina and end right here in the marina versus like landing and and flying out of some area in the middle of the desert, honestly. No, Phil's the only one who's been skydiving. I haven't been, of course the kids haven't been, and I think that Dubai would be the only place that I would be willing to do it. I know that Brooklyn would love to do it someday. I can totally see her yeah, skydiving. Especially. especially if she goes to the Air Force Academy. Yeah, She's yeah. been thinking about yeah. that. I think the Dubai skyline is probably my favorite skyline in the world, and it might be replacing Manhattan. I have to say that Gio is a fantastic photographer. Every time we stopped at one of these landmarks, he would take everybody's picture and they look awesome. So if you want to see his work, then you should follow us on Instagram. That's the end of our tour, but Vicky's here waiting for us. That was a really great way to see those landmarks because if you were in a car, it would take hours and hours and hours to drive and go to each one of them because you don't realize how big and spread out Dubai really is. It can be really far from one place to another, but by boat, that was only 99 minutes and we got to see it all. When I imagined coming out to UAE, I pictured us going to the desert, getting immersed in the culture, learning about the history, having fun in the dunes and camels, and all these things are running through my mind and I cannot wait to have this experience. Our driver's on their way and it's all one package deal. So from the moment we're picked up to the moment we're dropped off, we got this booked through our new friend Vicky and we're using Citron Tourism. We're gonna leave the link and the info that you need if you wanna book this exact experience in the description. I'm excited to meet our like safari driver. I already know his name, his name is Noor. Well, I'm excited to meet Noor. You're Noor. Yes. Can, you, can I say hi to you oh, on camera? Hi, hi. Noor, I'm Phil. Hi. Pleasure, okay, great. Let's go? Let's yes. Go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Our first activity is going to be dune dashing. None of us have done that before. And Noor says that it's about a 45 minute drive out of town, so we're just going to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Until the new ride! That one looks like, like more of a female head, but that one looks more of a so we're gonna hang out here for just a little bit and enjoy the atmosphere, but we are in the Emirate and the city of Sharjah, which is a little bit unique for the UAE because this particular Emirate does not allow the sale or consumption of alcohol at all. Well, technically if you had a license, but I think that's very, very rare. And that's due primarily to the large Muslim population that they have here. And because of that, it attracts a lot of Islamic tourists. Do you put, also put names on these? One side in Arabic and one side in English. 80 dirham for that bracelet right there. As soon as we arrive, Colt can't get away from this vendor that is selling uh, necklaces and bracelets and rings uh, to have your name engraved in Arabic. And he's been really into gold chains lately and wanting to collect them a little bit. So this can add to that. Uh, but I love that they are thinking about souvenirs. Um, so they spend their own money on souvenirs and I love that this is the kind of thing that they want to get and they can keep with them for a very long time. And they'll always remember this trip. What are you getting on the necklace? I'm getting my name in Arabic engraved on a bracelet. He even negotiated a lower price and he got it for 70, which is maybe 25 USD? No, 20. 20? 20 USD. Arabic, right there. Dad, why you wanted it? Because it looks like a military thing, but I don't actually know my blood type, so I just got clean. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of falcon is this? Yeah, this is a falcon you and I should know about. This is so cool. Hello. His talents are strong enough, he could probably carry a dog. 
Probably. No way. <laughs> oh, he just pooped. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, bro. Okay. You wanna hold him? Uh, sure. He's heavier than I thought he would be. <laughs> he's so heavy. He's like, he's not heavy, it's more like, it's more like he's like heavier than I thought he would be. What would you rather have, a cat uh, or a, a cat. falcon? Uh, over any pet, a cat. Ah. <laughs> it's time for the dune bashing! And we're gonna be in the same vehicle that we drove from our hotel out to here in. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser. Oh my God, we're gonna get run over. <laughs> That was a close call. So, Noor says that he has never had a, a dune bashing incident where he's flipped the car. So we've got a good track record so far and I, I hope he doesn't start today. But it is rigged, that car, to roll bars. Roll roll bars. Yeah, so Phil full says it. A full what? Roll cage. The cars all have full roll cages. So you would be safe-ish, <laughs> protected, if it did roll over. We're all pretty excited back here. Right guys? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get the prime spot because the AC is blowing right in her face. Where we're going. We're gonna race. driving. This is a lot more intense than I expected. He's doing such a great job. Yeah, it was, the music's it's actually loud. really, really fun. Honestly, I really, really like it, but I'm getting a little car sick. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there were a few moments I was a little nervous. The car in front of us looked like it went on two wheels. I thought, I really hope we're not going on two wheels, but yeah, Noor did a great job. It was a lot of fun, and it was like a wild ride. I was actually hoping for us to like roll over. <laughs> you were hoping for that? Uh -huh. That's like all I was thinking, please don't roll over. I do think we have to check in on Colt. He gets car sick when you're doing a normal kind of drive, so something like this, probably taking a little bit of a toll. Come here, buddy. Not well, I get really ocean sick, because I mean, I throw up just from riding on boats, so. This really hit me. How are you doing right now? Pretty good. I'm not gonna throw up now that we stopped, but it was not a good experience for the sickness part, but a great experience for the whole swerving and not falling over and dying part. That was pretty nice. Nor pulled a goodie out of his bag for the kids to play with. Okay, do one thing, sit here. Sit. Ready? Yeah. Yep. I don't think we're half as good at sandboarding as Nora is at driving. Too much friction. Whoa. That was a pretty phenomenal day here in Dubai. But I gotta say, after that experience last night with the dune bashing, my neck is more than a little bit sore this morning. But we are catching our rental car right here and we're gonna head off now. We're going to Abu Dhabi for the next two nights. And even that's not gonna be the end of our travels through the UAE. So hopefully you will subscribe so you can follow us along throughout all of these episodes. And all the other continents we're gonna get to this year. Goodbye, Burj Khalifa. 
It is the tallest building in the world, but maybe not for long because they're actually starting to construct another one that's going to be an entire kilometer taller than that one. No. No. What? Why don't you tell us off? That's what I'm talking about. Tell us off? <laughs> <laughs> yourself. What? That wasn't rolling, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Screwing on the prime cap to my prime and putting it in my bag that I got my prime from. So we can go on a big yellow boat called Yellow Boat. The Yellow Boats. Yeah, a big yellow boat called the Yellow Boat. 